we booked a live audience tonight. Yes, I might have trouble with one or two of them. In fact, I know what's already in your minds. You see, I walk on, a mind reader, I know what you're thinking. What's that? Many people wonder, what is that? That is, in truth, the world's oldest recorded trick. Oh, some say. Some actually say this. It's, it's a true story. That there's a hieroglyphic in Egypt on a wall of a man doing this trick. I don't know whether it's true or not. I'm just telling you. That's what they think, all right? Hieroglyphic. If it was this far down the wall, it would be a lowroglyphic. You know that. <laughs> now, what we need to do here is we're going to pick on somebody in the audience. Now, young man there with a sort of a knitted sweater with a light line across and that. You, sir, what's your name? Chris. Chris! Good, good answer, good. Chris, where are you from? Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush? Just over the road. Just over the road? How nice of you to drop in. <laughs> sort of like home from home, isn't it? Now, Chris of Shepherd's Bush. What I must ask you to do is this. I must ask you to answer nice and loud, nice and honest. What's that? It's a cup. It is indeed a cup. A cup, like. Because I'm from the north, you see. <laughs> what you've got to do is this. You take that and you put it there and you use one of these. Now, I only use one cup and one ball. And all you have to do, Chris, is keep your eye on the little white ball. Now, Christopher, is that your full title? Yeah. OK, Christopher. Where is the ball? On top of the cup. You're wrong. It's on the bottom. The cup is upside down. Perhaps my speed is baffling you, so I should give you another chance. I'll even put my hands in my pocket. Christopher of Shepherd's Bush, who is now desperately wishing he'd gone to see something else. Christopher, <laughs> where's the ball? It's on the top of the cup. It's on top of the bottom of the cup. And the only time you should worry is if I sneak it into my left hand. Because if the ball's in my left hand, it's in my left hand. If it's not in my hand, it's under the cup. If it's under the cup, it's not in my hand at all. If it's in that hand, it could be in that. If it was in that, it could be up there. If it was up there, it could be down there. If it was in the pocket at the same time, it could be up there at the same time. It's on the cup. If the cup and the ball are together, they can't be separate. Except they can't be together. If it's up there at the same time. Now, if the cup and the ball are scattered and the cup is empty, you can't have the ball. You've got the ball in the cup, you can't be in the pocket. In the pocket, you can't be in the can at the same time, it's on the cup. If, on the other hand, the ball and the cup are together, then the cup. Are... You're not following this, are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's too fast. It's too fast. Here is a television action replay. Nodding slowly, Chris. Where's the ball? It's in the cup. In the cup. Take it out, put it into my pocket. Where is it now? For 50 pounds. It's, um... In your pocket. In my pocket. In other words, it can't be under the cup, right? Wrong. Wrong. Now, this is... <laughs> I should teach you this. I should teach you this. I mean, there's no point otherwise, is there? Look, what do you do for a living, Chris? What's your job, your vocation, your way of life, your occupation? Uh, it's a, a sales representative for a vending machine company. A vending machine company. So you sell machines that sell. That's right. Which ultimately, therefore, could put you out of a job. Yes. Because <laughs> somebody will eventually sell a machine that sells the machines that sell. True. What you true. need is another occupation. <laughs> what you need is a cup. <laughs> I mean, I'll teach you this. I've been up here a few minutes. I just walked on, and already you owe me fifty pounds. <laughs> oh, no. The doors have been locked. Now look. <laughs> Ball, ball cup. Now, this is how the trick works. It's very simple. You get a cup and a ball, and you show it to be empty, you see? Just an empty cup. And you drop the ball in there. Now, the moment the ball is in the cup, I'll teach him this. You take it out with a sweeping, swooping action, right? You sweep it out, you put the ball in your pocket, and you flick it hard. Now, the ball... I know this is a funny thing to say, but the ball actually physically shoots up your sleeve. Yes? Yeah. Say, yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. Good. Now, you've got to put the cup down to catch a ball that goes up your sleeve, across your shoulder, down the side, under the cup. But be very careful that you don't put the ball into the wrong pocket, because when you go flick, everybody claps. Why do they clap? Because when you flick, you've got a lemon. It baffles them completely. <laughs> don't know where it If you clap that, you'll go mad over the orange. I don't know where that... Thank you. And 
and thank you. Hope you like that. One of my favourite routines. And here's a routine that I've been watching over the last couple of days being rehearsed. And it's very good indeed. I know you are going to enjoy the talent of the Brian Rogers Dancers. <laughs> something else that was fun to do. A long time ago, I did a routine on this show with two chimpanzees, you see, but they were grown-ups. And somebody saw it and said, can you teach chimpanzees to do magic? Well, I didn't know. So we got two baby chimpanzees, and uh, then things started to go a bit haywire. And I'd like to show you some of the highlights of what happened. Now, here we have, as you can see, one of these. Now, this is what you use at school, and this is where your first magic lesson starts, OK? What we're going to do is take this, and we're going to give it to you. Now, would you just like a piece of chalk, and um, just have some chalk? There's some chalk. No, you don't eat the chalk. You use the chalk. <laughs> it looks like you're smoking it. What are you doing? <laughs> Here's a deck of cards, and I want you to take one of these cards, if you wouldn't mind. What are you doing with the chalk? You look like Winston Churchill. Give me a Give me a Give me a Oh, hello. How are you? Yeah. Oh, you look like Winston Churchill. Now, this is a good trick. Look at this trick. Now, here we have a magic wand. Now, get hold of the magic wand. That's it. Wave it about over the paper handkerchief. Inside here, we have an empty box. Do you want to look in the box? It's empty. Say, yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were going to have a row then, didn't you? Yes. Now, we're going to put inside... <whistles> the trick happens over here. Now, what we do is we just... Debbie, could you just bring back the paper, please? Thank you. Now, would you give me back the one? Because I want the one back. Thank you. Now, we just put this on here. Would you just leave the one below? I'm trying to do a trick with the one. Can I thank you? Would you put the one? 
Thank you. Now, you put the one there, we put the paper there. We put the... Would you leave the one to look? I want the paper on the table. If you just... Would you just look at the table, I'll do... I'll tear the paper up like this. All right? Right. Now, we put the paper into the box. All right? Like so. The paper is inside the box. Have a look. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. The torn pieces inside the box. Now then, take them out. Take them out. Good boy. Now we put them inside there, and what's we got here? Oh, looky, looky here. What have we got here? We've got a little hat just for... You don't want to. <laughs> Do you want to try a little hat on? There. All right. <laughs> no, I don't like the hat. The box is empty. There you go. Now, what is this? Let us discuss this. Hey, we're discussing it at great detail. This is a secret box. Watch, fellas. Stop eating the flowers. <laughs> you want to chop off? OK. William, watch. Here we go. We're getting rid of that straight away. Now, <laughs> look at this. What's that? Here. What's that? What's that? Do you know what that is? <laughs> no, let's consider carefully what this is. I don't know. What do you think of it? Snake? Sausage. Now, the trick is to get the sausages back into the box. And we're going to put the sausages. What have you found? What's in the box? <laughs> There's nothing in the box now. I've taken the sausages out of the box. So what have you found? the box, right? Yeah. Now we close the lid and we open the lid again. Look. Sausages. <laughs> Pretty impressive stuff, huh? We put the rope inside the bag. There is the rope inside the bag. Now all we do is we just make a few snippy snaps over the top like this. Would you pay attention? I'm doing a trick. <laughs> snippy snap, snippy snap. Very good. Then we throw these away. Now. <laughs> the trick is over here. Now, take out in the bag. What? <laughs> you have destroyed the flower vase. Oh, let's clear it all. Go on. That's it. Right. <laughs> get rid of it. Come on. Let's get rid of these as well. Now, just take your hand in there and take out the rope. Oh, what is this? This isn't the rope. What? The bag's empty? What have you brought? Oh, I see. It's you two guys. You're trying to make a monkey out of me. Look. <laughs> now, you're probably wondering, and so are they, what was the chimpanzee so fascinated with when he looked into the box and tried to find something? He was looking for another chimpanzee. Normally on this show, we do not give away our deadly secrets, ladies and gentlemen. But in truth, as all the magician's uh, tricks are supposed to be done, this one was done with mirrors. <laughs> and that's what he was looking for, which is no reflection upon my act at all. So. Now, in the bar area today, we have the lovely Debbie McGee. Hooray! Round of applause for Debbie.
Good girl. Now then, Debbie, you're proving to be very popular on the telly, and it suddenly occurred to me that you had never, ever had a trick done on you on the show, which seemed very unfair. So I've got a deck of cards, and what I'm going to do is just square these off and ask you to take any one playing card, just as they go from left to right. Just, t just take a playing card, any one at all. Just take one out of, out of the deck, all right? Now, you happy with that one? Yes. OK? Now, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is just square the others all up and ask you to look at that card and remember it. Mm -hmm. Is it the Nine of Diamonds? Yes. Do you know how I knew this amazing fact? No, Paul. Yeah, I'll show you. They were facing this way, and when you took it out, I looked at it. <laughs> Good trick. <laughs> Say yes, Paul. Yes, Paul. <laughs> That's why she works for us, ladies and gentlemen. Now, do you remember the one where we cut you up into a few pieces? Yes. Yeah. Well, this is that kind of trick. All I have to do is square the cards off because they're designed to just fit inside this box like that, you see? And once you've got them into the box, we can get them, tap them all down neat and tidy. And I remove two steel blades, all right? Now, you'll probably think this is funny, but we always bang them together. <laughs> like this. And the audience knows they're solid because mm -hmm. they know you're solid. And then what happens <laughs> is you actually stick one of the blades through either the top or the bottom. You decide. The bottom. The bottom, all right. We'll shove that one through from front to back, like that, all right? And we'll just get it to go all the way through. Now, you can see that the blade has severed the young lady's legs. In... Yes, you can feel the pain, can't you? Yes. Twice a night. Now, you then take this and you put it through here, and I'll try to do this so that the people can see it just like that, all right? Just slap, sever it through like that, and you go, mm, mm. ah, it's probably your backbone. <laughs> Sit up straight and it goes all the way through. See? And now you have a deck of cards cut into three. That, un I don't know why it is, when we do this on the stage, Debbie, have you noticed nobody ever claps? Not until you do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just like you, Debbie, sewn up into three little pieces, mm -hmm. all right? Or in this case, cut up. And of course, when you're feeling a bit cut up about it, all we have to do is, oh, oh, oh and we push it back, mm, 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 like that. <laughs> and once we've got it back together, what happens then is we remove the steel blade, show that the steel blade is absolutely solid, and then, of course, we just do show that one is absolutely solid, and then you tip them all out of the box, and you can go right back to the beginning, and then you can carry on, and you can do your card tricks willy-nilly. And a deck of cards, 52 in number. Oh, no, I forgot that one. <laughs> so, oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, look, over the years, we've had so many jugglers on this show, it just isn't true. And we thought we'd seen them all and seen it all, until along came three young people from America and showed us a completely new way to look at juggling. You watch closely. Hey, Giles. <laughs> Thank you.
to know you. Right. What's your name? Blue. Pardon? Blue. 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 How do you spell it? B-L-U-E. Well, that's a colour, sweetheart. Are you sure that that's your name? Yes. OK. Blue who? <laughs> Blue who? Blue who? McCaskill. Blue McCaskill. Well, there's a thing. How old are you? Eight. Married? No. Boyfriend? No. Can I have the job? <laughs> well, at least I got I don't know. There you go. Well, now, this is a stage. Have you been on a stage before? No. No? Oh, well, it's nice up here. You see, these things over here, they're called the wings, and that's mm. called generally in a theatre, the proscenium arch, you see? More wings over there. Don't know why. Funny band over there. That's it, really. And this is it. So what do you do? Um, do you sing? Do you dance? No? OK, you tell them a joke and I'll get a trick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was a good joke. I heard them laugh. <laughs> I heard you playing for sympathy at the end as well. The ah bit. Great. Now, do you know what that is? All those are? Yes. What are they? Rings. They are not just rings. Mm. They are elephants' wedding rings. <laughs> I personally had to marry four elephants to, to do this trick. Now, what you've got to do is answer all my questions very loudly with a yes, Paul. Do you understand that? Yes. Yes, Paul. That's it. <laughs> but loud, you see. You've got to fill this auditorium with the sound of your voice, so give it some welly, OK? Do you understand the word welly? Yes, Paul. Good. <laughs> it's working very well. Now, sh count these out loud. How many are there? Count very loud. One, two, three, four. Four, yes. Four. One, two, three, four separate steel rings. No, you <laughs> Right. We'll start again. There's one, two, three, four separate steel rings. Yes, Paul. Good. Now have one of them. That one or that one. Just have a ring. Go on, get all the ring. Oh, you took it with your left hand. This means we are now engaged. <laughs> Didn't you know that? When you take a ring off a man with your left hand, you're engaged. But my prospects are very good, so don't worry. Now, what you got to do, Blue? <laughs> Listen, any particular shade of blue, is it? Or just... <laughs> what you do is just hold it out like that, two hands. Now, have a good look at the one you picked. Just have a good look. Is there a hole in that ring? Yes. What? <laughs> Where's the hole? <laughs> Where's the hole? In the ring? No hole. <laughs> you said there was a hole. Where did you think there was a hole? In the middle. <laughs> I do the funnies, you look pretty. <laughs> but you, it suddenly dawned on you, didn't it? You were looking for a hole in the egg. Because, you see, you can get a set of these for children. Did you know that? And they have a hole cut through there. 
except for the set made in Hong Kong. They've got the hole cut through there. Hey, do you know, I've never seen a set with a hole cut through both sides. No, it's true. Now, what you've got to do is examine these carefully, because this is a professional set, look. No holes in them, is there? Mm. Have a look in yours. There's no holes in that either. Mm. Fantastic. Give me that here. Now, we'll split them into two twos. Two here, two here. Pick two, Blue. I've done it again. <laughs> so just pick two, Blue. These two are these two. Not bother which two. Then, OK, hang them on your left arm. Put your finger in your ear. <laughs> on this side because I want to tell the audience a secret. <laughs> and then after that... <laughs> could you hear that? No. It must have worked. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, Blue, climb up on my knee. Now, listen, Blue, huh? it's important. You have personally now checked all of these rings. That is a solid steel ring. Yes, Paul. Good. This is another solid steel ring. Yes, Paul. Good. Do you know, Blue, there are some magicians in this land who can take solid steel rings and just rub them together like this, and when they rub them together, that joins on there, just as surely as that one joins on there, and yet, watch, they come apart again. Isn't that magical? Yes, Paul. Good. There's some magicians can twiddle them all the way around to prove that they're solid like this, yet when they hang them on the thumbs, on the way down, the darn things just join together like that. Isn't that mystical? Yes, Paul. Good. Some magicians can twiddle one one way, one the other way, and yet just take them apart like that instantly. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, Paul. Good. Some magicians can just wallop them together like this, and they just join together like that all the way around, and you look really closely. There's no holes. Will you marry me? <laughs> To the yes ball. <laughs> we were getting along grand till then. Could you do this and join solid steel rings together? Could you? No, put your finger in your ear. Could you join solid steel rings together? No. You couldn't? Oh, Blue. What you need is that. Look at that. Wow. Get all of that with your right hand. Now, now, what? Don't squash it. It's very soft. <laughs> now, look at that. Don't drop it. It's invisible. It'll take us hours to find that if you drop it. Now, look. Mm. Do you know what that is, Blue? No. Well, what do you think it is? Don't know what it is. Pardon? Don't know what it is. It's called confidence. Confidence is the most magical thing in the world, Blue. Once you've got that, you know, you can do anything. Oh, yeah. Swallow it. <laughs> go on. You go, mm, go on. And go, oh, like that. Swallow it. Yeah, that. Go on. <laughs> Preferably tonight. Yes. <laughs> there's nothing there. Well, you think there's nothing there because you can't see it. But, but, <laughs> but you've never seen the back of your head, have you? <laughs> but it's there, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that's it then. That's a solution. So swallow that. Go on, all of it. All of it. There's some on your finger. <laughs> Great! Now you've got it. A little bit of confidence. What you do is you face the front, look them in the eyes, face the front, square up like this. Not afraid anymore now. You get hold of the two rings like that, your two, because you picked them two hands. You go all the way around to prove there's no holes in them, and you pull them apart with confidence. You did it! <laughs> Four times I did that, not a ripple. Once you did it, they clapped like heck. Well, I never did. apart, can you? No. Do you know why? Because I only gave you a little bit of confidence. But don't you worry. That confidence is funny stuff, you know. If you remember that you swallowed a bit of confidence, 
and that you stood in front of all these cameras and all these people and you just let it, that confidence will grow. Until one day, if you want to, you'll be able to stand on a big stage like this all by yourself. And you'll be able to say, my name is Blue. I am the world's greatest, second greatest magician. <laughs> you'll be able to join solid steel rings together like this and twiddle them all the way around. You'll be able to just throw them together and when they come down, they'll be in a big long chain. <laughs> you'll be able to just throw them like that and they'll all be hanging on one like this. Spin them like that and spin them this way to prove they're solid. And then when you feel like it, you'll just be able to knit one, pull two, get one off. Then you get hold of another one and you'll be able to take the second one off. And before you know where you are, you'll be back to where you started with one, two, three, four separate steel rings. <laughs> I love doing that. One of my favourite routines. I think one of the nicest things I've ever done on television with magical circles. And some time ago now, we had a young man come on this show and he created magical circles in the air as well. The nation went wacky over this guy. We got more letters about him than I think than anyone else we've ever had. But his circles weren't made of steel. They were made of a very soft, soapy liquid. Bubbles. He's the bubble guy and he's back and it's a pleasure to have him back. Tom Noddy. Okay, this is a caterpillar bubble. See the antenna at the top? These guys can dance too. Y'all seem great dance for I guess that's why they call it break dance. Actually, that one only tastes bad the first couple of years. <laughs> now I'd like to take you to the Land of Oz. Y'all have seen the, uh, the Wizard of Oz, this film, where the tornado comes and takes Dorothy from Kansas over the rainbow to the Land of Oz? Watch for the tornado. Kansas anymore. You know, when I show bubble magic to physicists and mathematicians and kids and other scientists, one of the favorites is uh, the bubble cube. I think part of the reason is that it's a seemingly impossible form created by the laws of physics. Nothing's impossible. <laughs> that figure inside can get more and more complex. In fact, if you're not careful, you can go all the way to suds. <laughs>
Thank you. I tried to come up with a clever name for this next one I want to do, but, well, truly, it's just the ordinary huge bubble. to the extraordinarily huge bubble. Thank you very much. Bubble magic is no illusions. It's real magic. The audience here seemed to like that, and I hope you liked it at home as well. And, of course, the audience here, and you should know by now, that on this show, you never know what's going to happen next. And tonight is no exception. In fact, tonight, we're going to ring the changes. We're doing something different for you. The things that kids and grown-ups dream of, but never, ever get the chance to do. It's a fantasy everybody needs every now and then, you know. Yes, tonight we're gonna ring the changes. Tonight you're gonna see the greatest show. And in fact, roll up, roll up, ladies and gentlemen, because tonight Paul Daniels Magic Circus is very proud, pleased to present for you, well, Donnie the Human Cannonball, the sensation of the century. Not only that, Deborah the Queen of the Air will be appearing later, so will Jumbo Junior the Elephant Wonder. Okay. <laughs> The Clown Cavalcade Laughs Go! Slapstick and surprises in funny disguises! Yes, tonight we're putting on a circus. We're putting on a circus for you. Tonight we're putting on a circus. We're doing things that circus people do. It's a fantasy everybody needs. Every now and then, you know. Yes, tonight we're putting on a circus. Tonight we're going to see the greatest show. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, descending into the center of the circus ring, the lovely Deborah, the queen of the air. My gentlemen assistants will now cover the lovely young lady from head to toe. But at all times, please keep your eye on her lovely costume, ladies and gentlemen. Now, having got her covered from head to toe, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to move this young lady back up into space, where she came from. Take her away, higher and higher. And as she ascends above the circus ring, watch very closely. Three, two, one, go! Tonight, we're putting on a circus. We're putting on a circus for you. Tonight, we're putting on a circus. Tonight, you're gonna see the greatest show. Gentlemen, in the center of the ring now, we have this wonderful tent. What's wonderful about it? Well, let me show you. You can see right through it, and if I close the back curtains like so, step inside, gentlemen, and have a look yourself. You can see this one closes like this, and we now have two men guarding the interior of the tent. The audience here, of course, can see all the way around it and through it and into it. It's an empty tent, but if I close the center curtains like this, here is the return of Deborah, the queen of the air.
Paul Daniels will be back on Friday evening at 7.40 when some more contestants will be trying to identify the odd one out. Yeah. 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 